So what, what are the key factors in the time frame for a reorganization? Well, I, I believe very strongly that the reorganization and its planning should be kept highly confidential. It will be a, a massive zap <laughs> or tap on productivity, and it will generate bad politics. The rumors, the discussions, the jockeying, the political stuff that starts to happen will all distract from the company's real mission and its value creation, because everyone will be thinking about what's in it for me when the reorg comes up. Do I get a new office? Do I get a new promotion? I hope that person I don't like, you know, doesn't get promoted, et cetera, et cetera. So this should be among the key two or three people that are doing the plan so that you have collaborative thinking, multiple heads and, and experience looking at it. But it shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't be released what that reorganization is going to be, or even the fact that it's happening. It's best to keep um, quiet. Instant notice. Reorgs are executed in a single day, ideally. And I don't care if you're a you know, multi-country business with 100 offices or if you're a 10-employee company. It's always best to get as close as you can to announcing it to everyone at the same time. And, and you may have to do that, obviously, in multiple time zones and multiple media. But we'll talk about the ideal format, which is sufficient for most companies. Uh, and of course, with today's technology, it's very easy to record it and send it out. And people can you know, see it when they get up the next morning, if they're in the, the later time zone, et cetera. So ideally you know, they should know that some something is coming, but that's about it. And and seven to 30 days in advance, I would have a, a confidentiality cap and only the reorg team would be working for that week to month to, to figure out what the reorg is and, and validate that it's going to work. Because, you know, you, you've got to verify that people will want to be promoted you know, you've got to make sure you're, you know, they're they're committed. You're not going to lose them. You have to give them a raise. There are things you should discuss with people that are going to get promotions to make sure they're locked in. Because the last thing you want to do is promote someone to a new department and not have, you know, to run a new department and not have them committed long term and have them leave in the short term. That would be sort of a, a disaster for the business, right? So the major promotions that are happening you want some discussions with them, but you've got to keep it confidential. Planning reorgs should look at a six to 12 month, depending on your growth rate. If you're growing at 100% you know, per year, you probably need to think about reorgs every six months. If you're growing at 50% per year, 12 months um, is probably the right cadence or frequency to look at a reorganization of the whole org chart and, and shuffle people around a little. The CEO should have the next two reorgs in mind, as I said. And ideally, if you have a strategic plan five years out, the budget and the staffing that's built into that simulator, not a pro forma that just comes from an accountant, but a real business plan simulator, that's going to have the headcounts of every department. And so that's obviously going to be the, the math that drives what the org chart looks like and thinking about how many direct reports and, you know, getting ahead of the curve. Because the bigger a company gets, the longer in advance you have to plan these changes to execute them because, they, you know, it's like the oil tank or metaphor, right? It, you know, can take several miles to, to turn or slow down a, an oil tanker because it's got so mo much momentum. And, you know, a bigger company with over 100 or 200 people may have the same issues or will have the same issues to some degree. The learning and development program we talked about, it's not optional. Ideally, that's why the CEO has the next org chart beyond the one you're you're reorganizing for today in mind, because they're setting up the training and the learning and development uh, of the key players that are going to continue to step up. And as I said, not everyone can keep up with the growth of a company that's growing very rapidly. So maybe they're only going to get promoted every other time. But when you have to bring in someone above them, that can be sold as a plus for them too, because they're now going to have more attention. They're going to have mentorship. They're not going to have as much stress. 
you know, and, and everyone needs to take a breather. You can't go in a, in a startup from zero to a hundred million nonstop 80 hours a week without having some impact on your, you know, your personal life and your mental health and other things. For everyone that gets promoted, there's two or three people that didn't get promoted that thought they deserved it. And so you've got to think about how you're going to handle those people and, and you want to celebrate and make visible the reasons why the ones that did get promoted get promoted or got promoted rather so that they understand that so you've got to think about those people that may leave because they've been jilted in their own mind even though they probably didn't have the skill set and they certainly didn't compete with the person you selected for whatever reasons but it is uh, appropriate to have a session with them and make sure, you know, one-on-one -on -one after the execution of the reorganization, what they have to do. We have a, a document and, and a structure and part of our systems that's called the employee development ladder. And it has a list of the 10 criteria or 10 things you have to do at each level of management going from individual contributor up to the C level. And so there's 40 or 50, or maybe it's even 60 different things in that list that someone who really is serious about developing their career needs to think about learning to do. And, and that provides total transparency and framework, which reinforces integrity that you're getting promoted because you're doing a great job and you have merit, not because, you know, you play squash with the CEO or you're married to the, you know, the boss's sister or, or, or whatever it is, that that's having politics uh, creep in can cause a lot of grief in a culture.